Have you tried it? I tried it as an eater? Yeah. Not this day. You should try it. <laughs> I mean... That's what kids eat all day. Hi everyone, so today it is podcast 2. Our topic for today is let's talk about hay. So we're gonna talk about hay all throughout this video, but you know, it's not gonna be boring. We'll try to make it fun by putting a lot of random stories like last one. And hopefully at the end of the podcast, you'll you know, walk away thinking, oh, at least I learned one thing about hay. Yeah. So um, shall we start? You didn't introduce yourself. Oh yeah, oh, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm Guinea Dad. I'm Angelique. Okay. okay. <laughs> you want me to start now? <laughs> I ended up like the same one and <laughs> we were like, who starts it? Okay, so um, we can just start off with like the types of hay. So um, many of you may know, might know like one or two hay. Actually before I even like worked here, I only thought like hay was just like one type, but there's actually uh, five or six types of hay. And um, the two that people might know the most is Timothy and Orchard, but there's also um, alfalfa, there's oat, uh, meadow, and Bermuda. So yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> ones that Angelique <laughs> mentioned just now, those are like, um, you know, one of the more popular hay among guinea pig owners and maybe other pet owners. But, you know, obviously there are a bunch of other hays as well. Um, you know, common misconception about hay is hay is not grass. They're different, but no, I mean, hay is grass. So when you dry grass, put it together and they're hay. So when we dry Timothy grass, it becomes Timothy hay. When we dry orchard grass, it becomes orchard hay. Wait, I was just thinking about this earlier, but like, since oat, okay, this might be stupid, but like oat is type of hay. So does that mean that when you eat oatmeal, then? Oh yeah, so. Um, does it mean that you're if you? So la last time I was actually watching on YouTube when I first got into this, you know, this whole like grass and hay business. Mm -hmm. I was like, wait, why are there like oat hay? Like what's the difference between oatmeal? I was thinking the same thing. Mm -hmm. And there is actually a pretty good YouTube video out there that um, showed the time lapse of oat growing, right? So what happens is they, you know, obviously just like any other grass, it starts to grow like when they're little and they grow taller and taller and taller. And then if the farmer wants to harvest grass, hay, then they cut it and then dry it, right? At, mm -hmm. When there's a certain, you know, stage. Yeah. But for grain people, like people who want grain from oat, like oatmeal or whatnot, they just let it grow. And then what, what it does is they start to like almost ripe. And then all these grains starts to show up on the top. Mm -hmm. And then once they're fully grown, then they cut it. And then, you know, it's part of it is hay, right? But what they do, they process it, so they filter out all those like straw, mm -hmm. cut out all the straw and all, only grains left. Oh. So that's same for like oatmeal, uh, same for rice. I'm not sure if you've seen rice, but you know, it's essentially the same process. They oh, just okay. put that all through a machine. It's going to extract all that grain out of it. The alfalfa, that's also a different type of hay. Mm. It's called a lugum hay. And then you have to, you guys have to know the difference between you know, grass hay and lugum hay. Because lugum hay, they typically have high nutrition, which isn't always necessarily good for all guinea pigs. Mm -hmm. So they might be really uh, dense in nutrition and protein. So um, we can get to that later, but alfalfa is usually recommended for like pregnant guinea pigs or baby guinea pigs who need extra protein. I guess there's a lot of like animals that, that eat hay. Um, a, lot of, well, a lot of them are like small animals. Um, I don't know if you ever had any other animals like chinchillas or like rabbits, um, guinea pigs, but I mean, I've had chinchillas growing up and um, yeah, um, it wasn't even, I don't even remember a lot about them because we didn't have them for that long, but we had like at least like three chinchillas and they're pretty big, like they're like, what, like this yeah. big? Yeah, they're pretty big and like, um, I didn't really have a good experience with them. Maybe I just, <laughs> okay, so like this might have been like kind of sketchy to be honest because my dad was like, hey, you want chinchillas? And I was like, yeah. So then like we we went to like this parking lot and then like <laughs> someone gave them the, someone gave us these chinchillas and like I was like, this is kind of sketchy. Why are we like trading off like chinchillas? Like some kind of deal. <laughs> but yeah, so someone gave us some chinchillas and they were kind of like, um, there was like a mom and a sister and then like a baby. 
but like the mom and the sister are like really aggressive. I'm getting off topic, but anyways, yeah, chinchillas eat hay, and um, those chinchillas are kind of aggressive. Um, yeah, actually, I don't I, know why, but maybe it was just my chinchillas, but yeah. I, actually, I don't, I don't think it's just your chinchilla. I'm sure every chinchilla has different personality, but um, <clears throat> actually, I watched this really interesting YouTube video again, and then you know, you guys should too. It's if if you type uh, chinchilla apple stick on YouTube, mm -hmm. there's going to be a video with like a couple million views. And it's crazy. This chinchilla is like crazy. So <laughs> he would only eat the skin like the of the apple stick. Mm -hmm. So the owner was trying to like save money, right? Mm -hmm. So he was giving like an apple stick that he already ate and that only has the core and then he would give it to it. And then this chinchilla would straight up like just throw it at the owner. And then, and then he eats it, he pretends to eat it, and then he realizes there is no peel, he throws it aside. A couple times and then he throws at the owner and then they got, you know, they're pretty like feisty. Feisty? That's so, <laughs> that's so strange because they're so cute. And um, oh, um, tortoises too. They eat hay, which I didn't know. Did you know that? Actually, I didn't know that too. Yeah, I actually had no hay. idea what they eat. Well, that kind of makes sense because they're herbivores, so. I guess it's not too crazy that they eat hay, but... I've, I've seen them like eat um, like fruits in front of a camera and you know if they if it's not a land tortoise and if they're like sea creatures then I'm sure they eat like... They... I've seen them eat like jellyfish too. A jellyfish? It's yeah. so random. Yeah, but jellyfish is all obviously How though? Like how do, how do they make... how do they eat a jellyfish? They just straight up just like chop them up and just eat it. I didn't know you can eat that. They're killers. That They're like jellyfish killers. And apparently, like um, the jellyfish, you know, they have poison, right? They have the sting. Mm -hmm. But um, like tortoise, those, those uh, sea turtles, like they're like, you know, immune from it or something. Uh -huh. So they would just eat them all. But I, I thought tortoises are kind of, aren't they kind of like feisty too? Mm, or aren't they? I think like, it depends too. Can't they like hurt you? Like, oh yeah, like they can top off your finger if you're Yeah, like careful. snapping or isn't yeah, like a Yeah, they're super tortoise, strong. Like one or something. Yeah. Yeah. But, oh, um, I don't want to steal your fun fact, but you should you should tell them what your fun fact was. The yeah. rental? Yeah, Polish I rental. didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> so we went to, so this was back when I was in California, like a couple of years ago. And me and Sean, we went to this rescue center and then this rescue center lady, like one of the lady brought a tortoise. So we we're like, oh, that's pretty cool. Like how old is he? And then he's like, oh, 70 or something, right? And then like the owner like looked like 20 years old or 30, right? At, at most 30. So I was like, oh, okay. So how does that work? Like, did you get it from, you get the tortoise from your mom? And it's like, he was telling me the story about that there's um, tortoise rental. So because these creatures live longer than you, so you rent them and let's say you die and then it goes on the, it goes back onto the market <laughs> until another person kind of adopts it until they die and then it moves on to the next owner. So, so it's, the, it's the opposite way, you know, typically <coughs> with guinea pigs, like dogs, dogs or any other creatures, you know how, you know, they, they have shorter lifespan. But mm -hmm. tortoise is just opposite. You die before them, so you just keep passing it on. Yeah, just keep passing it on. It's like tortoise mental. That's Imagine if cool. you had like a tortoise and it was like your great grandfather's like tortoise, and he just passes it on to like the next person. So it just constantly like runs in the family. It's like the family tortoise. Yeah, that'd yeah. be cool. Yeah, that would be cool. <laughs> yeah, I wish guinea pigs would have like much longer lifespan. Yeah, that would be cool. Like dogs or any pets that we have. You know, so we don't have to kind of go through all the process. Going back to the hay topic. So I guess, okay, so guinea pigs are supposed to eat, um, that's supposed to be like their main source of diet. So it's supposed to be like 70 to 75% of their diet. And then the other like 30% can be, 34% can be like, um, like fruits, right? And like veggies. Like pellets. Right. Um, you know, we say that Guinea pigs diet consists of like 70% hay, 75% hay, 80% hay, 85%. But um, what, what, the, what, what people really mean is you need to provide unlimited amount of hay at all times, 24 seven, all throughout the day. So because guinea pigs, when you look at them, they are not, they're different from dogs and cats where they have like couple meals a day. So if they stop eating, it's very detrimental and very dangerous for them because 
um, it stops, their, all their system, like digestive system just stops once they stop eating. So this percentage is just to show you guys that you know, guinea pig needs a lot of hay, just like rabbits and you know, other herbivores. Just have them available all times. And don't try to be, you know, save money by giving them less hay too. You know, mm. that it's really crucial that they have a lot of hay at all times. So Timothy hay is actually considered, Timothy and orchard, these grass hays, they're kind of considered like, um, the expensive hay, in mm -hmm. a way, because they're more premium, and um, you know, people like us, like uh, we care about like super high quality that is completely different from something that cattle would eat. So <clears throat> you might be asking yourself, where can I find hay? And the only places I've ever seen hay is at farms. Where do you find hay at? I mean, I I think you're right. Like all is that the farms. Yeah, all, all the all the you know, like I said, you need to have like a grass first grown up in order to turn them into hay, right? Mm -hmm. In the US, how they grow hay is actually very, um, they, they kind of like automated a lot of it. So they have a farm that's a circle, like huge farm, right? And they have a circle and then there's a sprinkler like kind of going around like this and then waters it constantly oh, while okay. they're growing up. Wait, what, what kind of hay is just like the yellow hay that you, you like see like stacked and squares right so that's that's usually called you know straws straw is also hay but like low quality hay oh. so even timothy hay even if you have the highest quality timothy hay according to nutritional value and color and smell mm -hmm. if you let it out in the sun it's gonna turn yellow i actually went to this farm and um I, when when this was when they first cut it they cut it and it was kind of turning into hay, but it was, you could still see there's still some moisture in there. All right, and it's still in the fields, just lying on the ground. And then so they lay it on the ground so that uh, it dries by sun, it sun dries, right? And I was like looking and then I was telling the farmer, wow, these, these look beautiful this year, right? And, then, and he was like really proud of it. And he was like, oh, you know, it's like our hay is like the, one of the sweetest hay, you can't even taste it. I was like, really? And I, like tasted it <laughs> and then and then actually it's i mean if if i were if i tasted like hey hey maybe i couldn't taste it but because there's some moisture in there mm -hmm. you can actually taste a little bit of that like very hint of sweetness what like kind of hay was it that you tasted? It, it was timothy timothy so it was um uh, yeah it was really good um this was like yeah two three years ago and then I think um, this year was like one of the worst year for um, you know you know hay industry because the weather was really bad. Mm -hmm. But like two years ago or three years ago, I forget. But that was like one of the best year, and then that's when I saw like the most beautiful hay, like essentially everywhere. Yeah. Don't be afraid to taste your uh, guinea pig's hay. It's okay if you have. <laughs> We're not judging you. <laughs> like I'm pretty sure everybody gets curious about like what their pets eat. Cause you know, like right. you know, when you're serving stuff like to your like your animals or whatever, you're like I wonder if they actually like this. Right. <laughs> you know, like when some people get curious about like baby food and then like they try it. I'm pretty sure like people have done that. Like I'm oh, pretty yeah. sure Steve's done that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I. I How would you try like the pea flakes too? And you said they were like actually pretty good. <laughs> no, pea flakes are really good. Yeah. Yeah, they're good. Like, I and mean, plus, like our, our pea flakes are like all human, you know, intended products. Mm. So you know, pea flake that's completely safe. Like our herbal stuff, they're all like actually even better than stuff that I eat because those are like completely organic and everything. Yeah. So. Some people get allergic to Timothy hay, and then um, as an alternative, then they'll switch to orchard hay, right? Right. Or even if like you feel like your guinea pig needs to like switch it up, sometimes people will buy Timothy and orchard hay so they can have like both. The variety. Yeah, variety in their like diet, I guess. Yeah. So Timothy hay. Actually, a lot of people are actually allergic to Timothy hay, and more than you think. So I even know like Timothy hay farmers who are allergic to Timothy. Oh, hay. it sucks. Yeah, it's, that's their work, but they just have to deal with. So what do they what do they do? They have to like mask, put like kinds of masks on them so they don't like sneeze. No, they just plow through it. They they just cough and just just that sucks. be like that. <laughs> Honestly, I don't have allergies, so like I don't I don't know how that feels, but like, that must be horrible to be allergic to Timothy hay. Yeah, so some, some farmers are like really hardcore, like I was in this warehouse, I mean not warehouse, sorry, the barn, right? 
And then I can kind of see that it, there is a lot of dust in that barn, mm -hmm. right? Because it was completely enclosed. And then, you know, when they like throw hay in there, you know, a lot of dust stirs up, right? Yeah. So you can't even see in the air, like a lot of like dust in the air. And then he would just like, just go in, no protection whatsoever. And he's like, oh, like, it smells good today. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so like you know, some of them are pretty hardcore, and then they—I mean—they love what they do. And then some, like like I said, the farmer that had the um, ultimate allergy, he actually got it from his dad. So his oh. dad started the farm, and then he had two sons, and one son was allergic, and one son was not. And the one son that wasn't allergic, he actually went out to the city to work, and then one son that ended up, you know, getting the farm, he's the allergic one. Wow. <laughs> so, I guess you do you you do like what you can for your pets and you know your family if like even if you're allergic to it like cause I know some people will still buy Timothy so props to you if you're like if you're allergic to Timothy hay and you keep buying it for your guinea pig because you love them that's some real love right there because yeah. my uh, my sister's actually allergic to dogs and cats and uh, we've had dogs all our life you just kind of like tough it out I guess when you like love your pets that much so. Yeah. All right, that's like you said, if you love your job that much, it just kind of doesn't bother you, I guess. Right, right. I think a lot of the emails um, from those people who are aller <laughs> allergic to Timothy Hay, this one instant, this customer was saying that, um, you know, she's allergic to Timothy. So I would do what I would do naturally and say that, oh, actually, did you try Orchard? Because there is a high chance that you're not allergic to Orchard, right? Mm -hmm. But she said, yeah, but um, my you know guinea pig loves the Timothy Hay so much that I still buy Timothy Hay. But you know she was actually thanking us because you know we go through that you know filtering process to get rid of the dust and Timothy like small particles that could go in the air. Mm -hmm. And then because we have it in the box, she was saying that you know even though she has the Timothy al al allergy, whenever she uses our product, she doesn't really have to deal with it. I've been to the. <coughs> Uh, the warehouse a few times and um, I didn't think it was gonna be that complex because it's like um, it's just hey you know so I didn't think it needed so many machines but there's a lot of machines there it's all for you know getting rid of those particles and dust so um, you know at the end of the day hey like I said is grass that's cut from the ground right and sometimes the for example ground is uneven you know that you would imagine no 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 farming ground is completely flat they're uneven so um a lot of the stuff gets caught when they're harvesting mm -hmm. and then they get packed into the bale so a lot of dust could get in there and you know there could be like coke cans and sometimes like um i guess dead animals too with all these like variances and things that could happen like hey um we want i i, I wanted to make sure that our hay goes out in the um, purest form as possible, right? And because, you know, I'm sure you guys know, but Peanut has been suffering uh, the respiratory issues. She's been coughing while she was, you know, alive. So I wanted to make sure that's kind of taken care of. So we kind of have a bunch of equipment to make sure we get all that dirty stuff out, filter it out, or, um, you know, people can, when there is like big piece of like, Coke cans or whatever, it gets like filtered out as well. Everyone said that I shouldn't, I should not be doing this because, you know, um, if you think about it, there is a hay bale, yeah. right? And then what most people do, a lot of them, they just cut part of it and just box it and ship it out. Yeah. Compare that to what we go through. First of all, we have to buy all those like specific equipments, but not only that, but people has to keep feeding it and make sure, you know, everything gets filtered. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people gets involved. I guess we talk about like the benefits of hay. Um, the, one of the main ones is um, like we mentioned before, dental health. So we have already, already said this in like a, our previous podcast, but um, guinea pigs, their teeth, they never stop growing. So they constantly need hay like available to them at all times so they have something to be eating. And not only that, but it's also like very fibrous for them as well. Right, and make sure their stomach keeps moving too, yeah. right? So, you know, hay, that's why hay is essential, right? And, you know, if you guys can provide like fresh grass, that fresh timothy grass, um, like all throughout the year, which is kind of impossible at this moment, but yeah. 
you know, that's obviously the best, right? Grass is always more fresh. But, you know, the next best thing is providing Timothy with it. That's why you need it. <laughs> That's where you need to buy your Timothy Hay, and I'm just kidding. But honestly though, look, this is awesome. Every guinea pig likes these, these little, in case you don't know what they look like, but I don't know if you guys could see it from that far, but can you guys see this? Yeah, so that's Timothy. Oh, I made a mess now, I bet. No worries. This is what Timothy so looks like. So you've tried this hay before? You've, you've tried this hay before? This hay? Yeah. Did I eat it? Yeah, we tried it. I tried it as an eat it? Yeah. Not this hay. You should try it. <laughs> you should try it. I can, but you know it's not gonna taste like anything. I mean, <laughs> that's what guinea pigs eat all day. Yeah, I mean it's it just like it's just grass. I mean, it's essentially dry grass. So yeah. So um, <laughs> when it comes good? to was it good? Nice. Just tastes like almost as. Similar to paper with a little bit of hint of grass taste in it. To us, like because you know we don't eat this for a living, so we can't, we might be not be able to taste the difference. But guinea pigs they eat that all day, so they can tell the difference. And guinea pigs are actually one of the most picky when it comes to taste, mm -hmm. more than rabbit and other animals. Do you think that there's like guinea pigs that just don't like <laughs> that don't just like hay, or they they're just like it's in their nature to just like eat and like hay? Even if they don't, they can't not like it. That's their like diet, so yeah. they'll still eat it. But um, if your guinea pig is not eating as much, that could also be because you're not providing them higher, high quality hay. Oh, actually, um, since we're on hay topic, which is same as grass, did you watch our video of, about um, our DIY indoor pasture? Oh yeah, I saw like that. Like hydroponic one? Yeah, that's pretty uh, cool. That, that one, I think that one has the most views out of all the videos on our YouTube channel. I right? think because it's just like crazy that you can just grow like your own little field of grass for your like guinea pigs for them to like run around and eat. Yeah. You know, like a lot of people are surprised that I didn't give the grass anything but water. There was no like um, extra nutrition, like I didn't put extra nitrogen, whatever. All I did was just pour water and provide a little bit of light, and then it just grew that. How long did it take for it to grow? One week. One week? If, if you go to gym, I'm not sure if you have it in your gym, but some of them have like juice bars and smoothie bars. Yeah. They usually have like wheatgrass there. You know, they do wheatgrass because it grows fast. Yeah, so if you guys haven't checked it out, you know, check it out. It's, it's like we have a couple million views, so we, it must be fun. Yeah. So if you haven't watched it, uh, you, know, you can watch it. Um, if you want to grow it, you don't have to... You don't. If you want to grow your own grass, you don't have to make it as elaborate as that hydroponic system that I made. All you have to, you know, if you just type on Google, like, um, you know, wheatgrass kit, you can just grow it. So um, today we talked up, talked a lot about hay, and I don't think a lot about, not too much about guinea pigs today. So um, I actually this uh, podcast became more educational than I thought. And then next, next, you know, we don't, we haven't decided on the next topic actually, right? Mm -hmm. But you know, if you guys have um, any topics that you guys want us to discuss, then you know, leave in the comments below and then we'll take that into consideration for the next podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for joining. Bye. Bye.